the next speaker is Peter Pykocek. Uh Peter is a Polish American. He lives in Chicago. Um, I've known him since September 2015, and React Native was released in March 2015, so it kind of feels like a pretty long time ago now. Um, he holds the distinction, this is actually confirmed, of uh, being the first user of Expo. So that's pretty interesting that he, I, I guess that's pretty good retention on the first user. It probably doesn't happen very often. Um, so nowadays he's building DraftBit, which he's going to talk about today. Uh, it's a tool built uh, around kind of a visual editor for building apps with Expo. Um, when I met him, he was dressed in a fancy $2,000 suit because he worked at a company where anytime you went to speak at a conference, they gave you a budget of $2,000 to buy a suit. But now he's wearing Allbirds, which if you're not familiar with it, that's like what every person in San Francisco wears, uh, especially if you're a VC. Um, another thing that he's into is uh, taking photos of plants and putting them on Instagram. Um, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. There's, if you go to Peter's Plants on Instagram, it's a, a feed of flowers that he's seen that he really likes. Uh, so he has a very gentle soul. <laughs> All right. So here's Peter. Hey, can you guys hear me? Okay, sick. It works. All right, one second here. How's everybody doing? Dzień dobry, Kraków. All right. One moment here. All right. I think we're good to go, right? Yeah, we're good to go. All right. Uh, thank you so much for coming, everybody. My name is Peter Pakarczyk, and today we'll be talking about building Expo apps with DraftBit, right? Uh, so I'm actually Polish but I was born in Chicago to parents that are from here. It's crazy because I haven't been here in over 20 years. So it's so nice to be back and flex my Polish skills. I actually have to do something for my mom and record a quick selfie. So is everybody here awake already? Can you just pretend like I proposed to Evan on stage and he said yes and just like clap for a little bit? <laughs> All right, let's just do this real fast. All right, ready? Okay, no clap. <laughs> okay, sick, thanks. Back to where we need to be. All right, so I'm Polish, right? My last name is pronounced Piekarczyk, but in the States, that's really hard for people to say. So we say pie, car, chick, right? Pies, cars, and chicks, all stuff that we like, right? Uh, I love to cycle, long distance biking is my thing. Um, I love Reason ML, which you'll see in this presentation a bunch of times. Highly recommend you check it out. That's the shameless plug. Uh, I'm a React Native lover, obviously. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be building a platform on Expo and React Native, right? I'm actually Expo's first user, and it's like cool to finally be able to say that. Like I confirmed that with Charlie again a few days ago, so you know now I can update my LinkedIn profile and like finally tell the world. Uh, as Brent mentioned, I love plants. I've got an Instagram. That was my first foray in Instagram. So I just put up a bunch of plant photos. Uh, I'm a Y Combinator alum, and I'm a co-founder of DraftBit. So before I give you the what, the why, the how of DraftBit and the problems we're solving, I need to tell you a story. And this story goes back to React Rally 2015, the humble beginnings. Now, what did 2015 look like? Well. React Native for Android wasn't a thing yet, right? We just had React Native iOS. I think it was like 014 or 016, right? We didn't have React Navigation. Relay for GraphQL was just announced at JSConf a few months before that, right? Think about what that ecosystem is like. We were probably building stuff on the iPhone 4, 5, or 6, or if you're an Andro Android person, I think the uh, Nexus 6P was out that year, right? Things were a little different. Anyway, that weekend, uh, I was speaking about making music with React. And that's the weekend that I met uh, Charlie, James, and Brent. And Charlie and I both showed up late to the speaking dinner, right? So we sat next to each other at the end, and we're just kind of like shooting the shit, you know? Like, what are you working on? What are you talking about? Whatever, you know? He's like, oh, I'm working on this thing called Expo. And I was like, oh, yeah? Yeah, it's this thing to make your React Native process a lot easier. 
I was intrigued. The next day, he gave me a working demo, and we were so excited, we went back to my hotel room with my buddy Evan and started building a mobile app for the conference. We did this in like 45 minutes, which is insane, right? Back then, the company was called Exponent, and you download this thing called the Exponent XDE, Extended Developer Experience. You'd uh, put in your phone number, you'd get a link, and you'd be on your merry way, right? It was really cool. And I ended up becoming obsessed with the product. And <laughs> I assume that most of us are developers here. And what does that process really look like usually? No matter if it's like 45 minutes or 45 months, we're always putting out fires. I was building a mobile app at the time, and I fucking hate Xcode, right? The build phases, the targets, Android Studio. I was like, I can never get my stuff built, right? So using Expo was a breath of fresh air. Fast forward a couple of years. Uh, I you know, jumped in head first into the Expo world. I wrote articles. I helped a lot on Slack. I helped answer a lot of questions on the forums. It was something that I was like super, super into. And I started becoming a React Native consultant. I started React Native Radio with Natter, uh, which was a super fun experience, right? I was really into it. I drank the Kool-Aid and, and was using it. Anyway, I happened to meet my co-founder, Brian. Uh, and Brian and I are both really into networking and meeting new people, right? But we also understand the power of staying in touch with the people that we already know, right? So we started working on Orchard. And this was about 2017. Things were a lot better, right? The pitch for Orchard was an app that helps you manage your personal and professional connections, right? And, you know, what I would always say is, like, the same way that you stop working out, you lose muscle mass, Right? If you stop connecting with people that you already know, those connections fade away. And a lot of the times, the people in our network already are, you know, become very, very valuable to us. But being able to like, reach out and like, you know, dealing with like, oh, like, I haven't talked to so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so is a lot of work. So we just wanted to simplify that process through a mobile app, right? So 2017, what did that look like? Expo's uh, APIs were insane, right? Anything that we needed was there, contacts, calendar, et cetera. We had React Navigation, which was like the best way to do navigation. We had GraphQL and Apollo, right? We had everything but a great app idea, which I'm alluding to in a second here. So ultimately, we got accepted to go to Y Combinator, and we moved out to San Francisco for four months, right? Now imagine this. You just met your team. It's been two months. And now all of you are moving into a single family home in San Francisco together for four months. So. Uh, we really learned a lot about each other at the time. We lived in this three and a half million dollar home that was set for demolition. The only reason we got to live there was because a tech billionaire was planning to build a mansion on this property. And I guess you can't just like buy a house and knock it down. You gotta like pull the community. People have to be open to it, right? So during that time frame, we got to live in this house that hasn't been renovated in 50 years, that hasn't been lived in the last five, but it worked, right? I got to meet the donkey from Shrek. The donkey from Shrek was our neighbor, right? Like, that's what life was like out there for us. Uh, and if you haven't watched the Silicon Valley show on HBO, I strongly recommend it, because like, we were literally just like living out like, moments in that show. Our living room was the office. We had an intern. You could see the curtains in the back. That was his bedroom. He lived on a futon and out of his suitcase, right, for four months. The co-founders all lived upstairs in the single family home. So it was quite the experience. You really get to know the people that you live with. Um, and anyway, we would work around the clock. Feature feedback, feature feedback. We'd roll out of bed at 8 a.m. and we'd work until like midnight or one o'clock, right? And we were just like so focused on like building and building and building, right? So the cool thing about Y Combinator was the dinners that they had, Tuesdays and Thursdays. What would happen is you'd show up to this dinner and you'd talk with your batchmates, right? You'd go over problems that you're having, you'd come up with ideas and suggestions, right? It was a great place to test features before you'd launch them to the public, right? And we heard a lot of different feedback about Orchard. Uh, but we also <laughs> gave a lot of feedback too. So whenever I heard somebody talking about a mobile app, I'd run over there and be like, have you heard of Expo? And if they did, I'd be like, well, you know, have you seen this feature? Or have you done this? Or did you know this is coming out, right? I was super excited about it. And if they haven't, 
I would, you know, be like, you should use this, right? Like, it makes life so much easier. And to this day, a lot of my batchmates still reach out for, like, React Native and Expo questions, which is cool. I ended up being that person. Uh, I ended up being that person so much that I started getting questions like, uh, why aren't you working on dev tools, you know? Like, Orchard is great, but nobody is fucking using it, you know? I'm more excited about how quickly you're releasing features rather than the features themselves, you know? And as a founder, that's hard to hear sometimes. One day, Amjad Massad, the co-founder of Repillet, came up to me and said, Peter, you need to be working on dev tools, right? You talk about this on Twitter, you write Medium articles about this, you tell everybody here how amazing Expo and React Native are, yet you're working on a map to map or an app to manage your personal and professional connections, you know? And he's like, and it's cool, but you could be doing more. So, you know, my founders heard the same thing. Uh, and, you know, we had this like moment, this existential crisis of, you know, do we push through? Do we continue making Orchard better? Or do we listen to the feedback that people are telling us, right? And it was a hard decision. You have investors, you have family members that like, you know, are counting on you, right? So what do you do, right? So we had our like rocky top, like our mountaintop like moments of like, are we working on the right thing? And you know the Medium articles that, are talk that I'm talking about, right? The ultimate guide to finding yourself, right? The dude who started 16 companies in two weeks just so he can write an article about starting 16 companies in two weeks, right? Like, uh, you know, like the guy that stole source code from Tesla and then wrote a bunch of Medium articles about it so he's famous enough so he doesn't have to go to jail, right? Like, we went through this whole process of just like of finding ourselves. Like, are we working on the right thing? Should we be doing dev tools? Like, is that really what we're into or are we just listening to what people are saying, right? which is a good thing. But ultimately, we ended up moving away from Orchard and built a few other apps in the meantime. We built a YC intros app, right? We made it easy for people that were in YC to meet each other. We built an app called Altos, which was sort of like a Facebook news feed for your private circles, right? Just something a little easier to use. And then we built Twitter Prospector, which was uh, put in your Twitter name, we look at your followers and people that follow you and help you find like people that you can recruit, like designers and engineers, for example. And lastly, we played a shit ton of Slither. This is like a warning. If you've never heard of it, do not play this. Slither will make or break companies. It's so addicting and you got this snake and the snake gets bigger and you eat other snakes and then you get fucked one day when a snake eats you, right? Don't do this. Whoa. That's not part of the presentation. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So anyway, DraftBit, finally, right? So what is DraftBit all about? We didn't want to move on from Orchard immediately because we built this great algorithm. We're like, well, maybe we can apply this to a few other things and see where we get, right? And we find ourselves building the same thing over and over again, right? We did have a login screen and a register screen and a feed, and, you know, I think I'm a pretty good engineer, but I found myself wasting time rebuilding these things instead of just fetching them. Because you know what? You know, 10% of this changed, or 10% of that changed. And at this point, I might as well be changing it, right? So in any case, uh, we wanted DraftBit to make that whole process easier. We wanted a few different like time frames, right? Uh, or we, we, wanted, like, we wanted to simplify and streamline the process of building things that you constantly find yourself building. What the hell? Hold on, this is weird. No, that's not what you want to see. OK. No. OK, anyway. So we wanted to streamline that process. We wanted to make it easier. So. What does that process look like? Something that you're already familiar with. You scan a QR code, you drag a bunch of components, and then you export that code, right? This is a developer tool after all, and we wanted to make it for developers. So we give you the things that we want with a few guardrails, right? Now, what does that UI look like? I want a little bit like this. Here's a little teaser, right? So you go to a website, draftbit.com, right? You download the Expo app if you don't, if you don't already have it, uh, and you start dragging and dropping components. Right? As you do, we've got this layers panel on the left-hand side. Right? It works like the same way that the Sketch layers panel would or the Photoshop layers panel would. You can nest things. You can reorder things. You can move them up and down. You can remove and duplicate them. Right? Uh, just like a simple, simple uh, tree of components. Then you've got the phone frame. Right? The phone frame is sort of like a preview of what's happening. 
right? The phone frame is specifically not a live preview of your app because we want you to focus on your phone, right? That's your source of truth. It's like developing a site in Safari and expecting it to work in Firefox and Chrome, right? You're probably going to have a, to a bad time if you do that. So we took that same approach and wanted you to focus on using, uh, using the live preview on your phone, right? And now as you drag and drop components and click on them, you get this config pane, right? So instead of having to Google things like justify content, is it spaced evenly? How do you spell that, right? Just get a drop down, right? Any sort of alignment things, any resize modes, like any colors that your app supports, all this stuff just shows up on the right-hand side, right? If, you, if you're Googling all these things, two to five minutes seem to add up, right? So we just wanted to streamline it and just have you look through some drop downs, you know, pick some things in a, in a, in a component and like move on, right? So while we were coming up with like the proof of concept of DraftBit, we knew that we needed to build real world apps for this to work, right? We can't just like continue coming up with things on our own. But we did build a couple. So, we built uh, an Instagram co clone called uh, PickBit. We built an Airbnb clone called uh, RentBit, right? And these were just apps, just we're testing the boundaries of the layout system that we put together, right? And these are real screenshots from uh, real apps and examples that uh, we were working on. So we also started something called DraftBit Studios. We knew that there was only a matter of time before we ran out of app ideas, right? You can only come up with so many ideas. So DraftBit Studios was an agency-style project where we would take on small clients with the catch being you have to be able to build this app in DraftBit, right? So the apps were more focused on screens and like lightweight backends, right? It was just a way to stay honest with ourselves. We wanted to build something that people would use in the real world, and for us to be able to do that, we needed real-world app experiences, right? So that taught us a lot about what people are looking for, how they want to build these apps, right? And the process uh, to go about building these apps. So anyway, what does DraftBit look like, right? So um, you go to this website, build.draftbit.com, and you start dragging and dropping components. You've got the website open on the left-hand side, and right now I'm running the simulator on the right. But you'd have your phone connected, you'd have 10 phones connected, whatever you wanted to do, right? And now, what we're doing right now is we're creating a push notification screen, right? Like maybe you have this in your onboarding process, you've got an image, you've got some text, right? And then, you, and then we're adding the skip and uh, enable buttons, right? So what happened here? I dragged over a container, which I'll tell you about in a second, and then two buttons, right? I go in, I remove the icons, I change the labels, I set justify content space between, and I'm done, right? In a visual way, right? It doesn't get much easier than that. Now, imagine you're a polygot, right? You work at an agency. You've never built a mobile app before, but you want to give, you want to uh, get started. You've got friends whispering into your ear, "Go native, use Swift, use Kotlin," right? You've got other friends whispering in your ear, "Use Flutter," you know. And then you've got, you know, somebody else saying, "Expo and React Native are the way to go," right? The process to, you know, like get Swift up and running. Downloading Xcode, right? Like downloading SDKs, downloading Android Studio, setting up these th path variables, right? The process can be a pain in the ass sometimes, right? Um, if you want to consider React Native and Expo, you just go to draftbit.com, download the mobile app, and start scanning things or scan a QR code and start dragging and dropping components. And you've gotten a good idea because we also give you the source code. So as you are dragging and dropping, we generate all this stuff. And then you can just like copy this code into a current project. If you click export project, it builds you uh, uh, an expo project the same way as if you were to run expo init. Then you just go in there and run expo start. But with DraftBit, we also give you all your icons, all your assets, all your theme variables. Everything is just there. You can quickly figure out whether or not React Native is the right thing for you without going through the process of installing everything, right? Expo's already lowered the barrier for us so much we just want to lower it a little more, right? We want to make that process easier, right? Like, we want to get you addicted to an amazing platform. We want you to stop wasting time doing the same schnitzel. I was hoping this would be funny, but clearly, you know, <laughs> not as funny as I thought, which is totally fine. Okay, now, we are at a tech conference, so I want to go over the stack. As an engineer, I'm really proud of the things that we put together, right? Uh, DraftBit moves very, very quickly, and oftentimes I get asked, how do you move so quickly, right? What have you done? 
Well, we use React and we use ReasonML, right? ReasonML lets us focus on the things that we need to focus on and less on the undefined is, undefined is not an object, cannot read null of null errors, right? Like all the weird things that we uh, love and hate about JavaScript, right? We use WebAssembly and Yoga Layout for our phone frame. That makes things look really, really fast and neat. And I'll show you that in a second. We obviously use Expo, and then we use GraphQL and Postgres, right? So we're on a very short release cycle. We're releasing stuff like every couple of days. And this stack lets us do that. Now, I know I'm sitting here in a room of TypeScript individuals, right? But I strongly suggest you try Reason. I think TypeScript is cool, but it's just not for me right now, right? I think Reason is cool too. These dudes are wearing black. I'm wearing black. These dudes think they're cool. I think I'm cool, right? So it was just a match made in heaven for DraftBit. It's, what's, what, it's what lets us move very, very quickly and focusing on the things that matter to us, the same way that we want you to focus on the things that matter for you. So I just want to give you a quick demo of something that we put together in the builder, right? So like something that we shipped like a few days ago was being able to like rapidly switch from screen to screen to screen. And now check out these animations. Like I'm pretty proud of that. That's so cool, you know? I've never been able to see or tra see transitions like this before. So I got excited about that. Now, one thing that you've noticed is our components, right? So we support a variety of different components in uh, DraftBit. We support the React Native primitives and the Expo primitives, things that you already know and love and you're used to. Image, text, view, uh, linear gradient, blur view, scroll views, even like AV audio and video, right? We want to support all those things one-to-one -one. And so when you export the code, you know exactly what you're dealing with, right? We also offer some helpers, things like a divider component, right? We use dividers a lot, so let's just like build that in, change the height, change the color, and move on, right? We also offer a container that you saw earlier in that demo, right? Things that help you manage things like uh, scrollable containers, the status bar, light and dark color, the safe area view, uh, the gutter padding and spacing within your app, right? Just little things that we've noticed people were looking for to make their lives easier. <coughs> Lastly, we have Jigsaw. Jigsaw is our component library, sort of like how you use like React Native Paper or React Native Elements, right? We have our Jigsaw, but Jigsaw is like, has got a very strictly defined theme. And as you use the theme variables, you can change your app very, very quickly. And we support everything that you'd like for us to support, right? Custom fonts, colors, surfaces, backgrounds, shadows, border radiuses, type styles. Did that just happen again? What is going on? OK, anyway, so going back to theming, right? So what you can do with this is build a layout in DraftBit and then create a theme for that layout and just change these things really, really quickly. That sort of looks like this. It's just a UI picker, right? So as a developer right now, you have no guardrails. In the 11th hour, when shit hits the fan, you're probably going in, because I do this, and just like deleting the variable and putting whatever color needs to go there, because this needs to ship tomorrow morning, right? We've all been there before, right? But let the people that like to focus on that stuff, focus on that stuff, right? So your designer can go into DraftBit. Your product manager can go into DraftBit. Your non-technical person can go into DraftBit and make those changes, and let you, as a developer, focus on the things that you want to focus on data, animations, uh, API, control flow, right? Like all the fun stuff that we all know and love, you know? I hate when my designer comes up to me and says, you know, Peter, I think you got the wrong shadow color, man. You know, like the opacity is 8% when it should be six. You gotta be fucking kidding me. How can you pick up the 2% difference in opacity? It's already nearly invisible, right? So we built that in, and now our designer goes in there and makes those changes on their own without having me to do it, right? And I could focus on the fun stuff. The same goes for typography, right? So you upload your custom fonts. We follow materials designs like typography system. So headline one through four, button, caption, you know, names that you're already familiar with. You can do whatever you want. And then inside DraftBit, you don't just have to focus on defining a specific type style for a specific screen. You can override any type style with anything you want in the design system. So it's pretty cool. It's convenient. But you've also got the guardrails. We want you to focus on doing things a certain way so you can focus on doing the things that matter, right? All right. So a feature that I'm really excited about is screen templates. And this is shipping next week. 
So uh, the, for the last couple of weeks, we've sampled about 45,000 different actions that took place on DraftBit, right? So uh, we watched videos of people using DraftBit. We sent out feedback emails like, what are you looking for? What are you struggling with? And we found a lot of people were building the same screens over and over again. Login, register, account, profile. We had somebody spend four and a half hours building a login screen, and that's great. Four and a half hours on a website is fucking sick, right? I think Facebook's the only one that could beat us in that. Uh, but we also decided that maybe we should optimize some of those things, right? So we're launching screen templates. And what you do is you scan a QR code, you can apply your theme to that app, and then just like, quickly add it. And now you can focus on building the five to seven screens that matter, right? Your money makers, right? Iterate on those screens. Make that process easier. You don't have to build a login screen ever again, right? You just use this. And we follow all the best practices, right? And those best practices can change over time. You just don't have to worry about it anymore, right? So that's something I'm super excited about. Now, the next thing that we're launching is uh, actions. And a lot of our users are asking for you know, like more interactivity. Right now, DraftBit as a platform is strictly like a layout engine. So you can build all your app's layouts. You still have to copy the code over to your code base and then you know, do all the interaction stuff, right? So we're talking about like asking for push notification permissions, asking for you know, different APIs like calendar and contacts, right? like navigating things, uh, login with Facebook, login with Google, right? like linking URLs, whether it's like opening a URL in a different window or consuming those. right? So we want to take these commonly used features and just give you a hook to do whatever you need with that, right? So obviously, if you ask for a push notification token, you got to send that to your server, right? So just here, run this command and send it to your server. Now it's all just encoded into the app for you with you not having to deal with that, right? It's just the process that React Native uses under the hood so you can trust it, right? Anyway, another uh, feature that everyone is excited about is navigation. Navigation is the most requested feature by far on DraftBit. But we all know navigation is hard, so I don't know when we're going to go live with this. We'll probably offer some sort of uh, controlled experience where you can build a lot, a lot of like, common navigation flows and just get you started, right? Maybe offer some hints in your app for this is where you'd nest a stack navigator and a tab navigator, right? So it's something that we're super excited about, but still have a lot of work to do to figure out how it's going to work. Uh, and lastly, one of the most exciting features for me, uh, something near and dear to my heart, is bring your own GraphQL. What does that mean? So you enter your GraphQL endpoint, right? Through the introspection schema, we figure out exactly all the queries and arguments and mutations that your app offers. You click the things that you want. You match them to components. We will generate the entire Apollo setup for you, including authentication. We will generate the query component for you, and you're well on your way. Now that means you've got uh, real data in your live preview. You've got the source code for all that stuff too, right? And you're done. You can celebrate. Uh, I've been working on this for a while, and I cannot wait, and it's only a few weeks away. And then everyone will be able to use it. It doesn't matter if you're using AWS Amplify or if you're using OneGraph, which offers a bunch of different services, right? It doesn't matter if you're using your own GraphQL endpoint. You just put it in, and it just works. I'm so excited about it. Everybody, thank you so much. You've all been Bayes, best audience ever. Uh, if you want to try DraftBit, go to draftbit.com slash appjs, put in your email address, and uh, right now we have a waiting list, but this fast tracks you into a, a free version of the tool that you can like, mess around with. Follow us on like GitHub and Twitter and Instagram. Uh, it's just DraftBit everywhere. Follow me on uh, probably Twitter and Instagram. I post a lot of dumb crap, so check that out. Uh, lastly, thank you, Software Mansion and Expo, for having us. You've been such a pleasure. It's so nice coming back to Poland, speaking Polish, hanging out with all the people that I've talked to online, but being able to do that in person. Uh, find me in person. I can also give you a demo of DraftBit. Thank you so much for having me. Do widzenia.